I'm Leon Miller. I'm basically I'm uh, not from KZN. I'm from uh, Northern Cape Nature Conservation. Uh, now, I'd like to start off with this. Uh, this is a. I don't know whether we can keep it into 10 minutes, Ken. <laughs> but I'll try. Um, okay, this is it. Um, just, just a little bit on myself. I'm responsible for biodiversity com uh, compliance monitoring in the Northern Cape. Uh, got involved with this investigation of reptile trade due to uh, a lot of cases we got in uh, the province. You see, I'm from an area we do we do not really speak English, and we only do that in uh, self-defence. Uh, but what I found it is it's a really a countrywide uh, problem. Now, the illegal trade, as you can see, is mainly, okay, let's do the uh, reptile trade first. The bird one we'll address a little bit later. The reptile trade is a serious trade. Uh, I, as can be seen, uh, one of the most traded commodities after drugs and firearms. Well, after the, after the talk uh, this morning, uh, it's moved up. Uh, estimated legal value, okay, the values that are based here is from sources which I'm not prepared to to divulge at this stage, uh, but that's more or less what's gone through on the legal system. Estimated, uh, also out of information uh, from uh, sources, uh, that's the indication is around about 10 million. Now, there's another one coming into the country. You expect everything to go out, but it's not. It's coming in as well. And then there's a, a slight focus move after, from, uh, especially from uh, uh, the South African species for Europe, uh, and it's even more popular than the Madagascan species. Now, as you can see, there the, it varies from snakes to lizards to geckos to tortoises, you name it, it's there. And it's being traded and it's being collected in large. Most of these photographs that you are seeing there are evidence photos taken uh, from guys that have been caught. Now, we have collection hotspots in the, uh, in the country but your main focus is in the red area. Uh, that's where most of our indigenous uh, small reptiles occur. The main, the main target species will be uh, mainly your dwarf adders. Those are why they're so popular currently with the European market. They're small, they're easy to keep. They are, some of them are venomous. Some of them, uh, but uh, mainly not uh, deadly. Um, and uh, some of them are very rare. They have uh, uh, color variations which are very popular. The same species having six or seven different color variations depending on the location where it comes from. Now, some of these species are extremely valuable. Then, of course, there's a second target one uh, which was indicated there's in value for the uh, Fisk sow snake. Uh, they're paying around about 3,000 uh, European uh, euros for it. So you can do this, your math, that's around about, with the brand value, around about, what's it now, 10 times that. It's about 30,000 30, uh, rand going. Uh, then the other target species, uh, which is now coming back into the country for breeding purposes and then being moved out. And we've caught uh, one or two guys coming through the border post with those in there. But that's around about the value of one animal. That's not a pair, breeding pair. That's what the value is. There is currently around about four or five breeding pairs in KZN. Then, of course, the lizards. Uh, they're also very popular, the normal uh, sun gazers, but then uh, the gecko population is also taking a threat and the ground geckos are being collected in pillowcases loads at a time. A 
Now, the methods are basically what they use is uh, road cruising, dr uh, mainly dri driving at night on the road, picking up snakes physically in the Macaland. Uh, it's a fairly easy task. Uh, we have guys that uh, even have uh, bragged on the on the internet of picking up 80 Godalises in one weekend. Physical collections. Knowing these guys know more about where these guy, uh, populations occur than what we do. Uh, they actually drive there, go in, pick up, and move out again. They have local residents picking up uh, for them, and then they come around and pick up the collected uh, animals. Local collectors are a good source of, uh, of telling them where to go to look for if they don't know. The postal services are used to move these so well as couriers. And then the foreign nationals are recruited to come and collect, and then, uh, but mainly as meals, you hardly catch the actual uh, guys that are smuggling methods, just some of the concealment methods that they use when they uh, move them across the border or out of the country. Okay, then, yeah, that's just some of the tools of the trade. When you stop a vehicle and you start finding these, you can immediately know what they're busy with. Now, this is, and uh, guys, I hear some laughter, but this is the main character in reptile smuggling in South Africa. He was caught in uh, uh, Western Cape coming out of the West Coast National Park uh, in April. He was with a German uh, national. They were both spent a uh, month in uh, Malmesbury Jail, ended up with a 100,000 rand fine each and some jail time, but that was, which was suspended. I don't think we'll be seeing him, seeing him quickly. Now, what is happening now, and this has been shown with all the information available. The, the main hotspot, the guys are coming into Namakul and collecting, moving the reptiles to KZN. From KZN, they launder them into legal collections, and then they are basically under permit, moved across to Germany and Europe, mainly Germany. Okay, we also have some uh, Chinese coming in. We've got some Scandinavian um, uh, people coming in, Japanese tourists. We've found picking up these, uh, especially these girdled lizards were Japanese. The Germans drive across the Namibian border, come in and pick up and drive back. Croatian oatmeals we've also had in the past. Okay, just some to give you an indication of what is the type of income that was generated by one of our suspects. Uh, or one of the main suspects, let's put it that way. Between the, he's uh, exported about 1,800 animals in the past three years. Out of these, about 1,100 were Northern Cape and Namibian species. And from about 980, he's generated 1.7 million rand. That was basically based on prices that were found in Mr. Harris's possession. Okay, now, okay, just some of, some of the problems that I experience, uh, the, the parcels are not checked properly at the border posts. So items are flown into Namibia, across the borders, into Mozambique, cross border, the vehicle, either by vehicles, and then the provincial legislation with reptiles are a nightmare. Uh, the law loopholes, uh, we all know that that's uh, what we call the province hop back into KZN, and from KZN it goes out. Uh, there's, there's indication of possible corruption by officials. The exotic species is another issue. The differences between the provinces is major. And then, of course, there's the multi trade as well, which we haven't really dug into yet. Okay, the illegal bird trade. <laughs> I see Ken showing me one minute. Okay, I'll try again. Uh, but uh, bird trade is large in South Africa. You, the price is varying anything between 50 to 100,000 per birds. Uh, which leads to where money is, there's always some form of illegal import or export. Now, the large demand for common birds, such as the African gray, leads to illegal imports of wild caught birds, in, un, uh, which is, uh, looks like that when they are discovered. The misnaming of similar looking species, these guys are clever, they p pack a p crate full of birds and they all look more or less the same, but they slip one or two that look slightly different, but if you really go and check and ID them, they sight is one and not si non-sighty species. 
the high, uh, the hiding endangered species between similar looking sites is two species dying. We've uh, we had cases where they actually dyed the uh, the feathers of the bird to look different. Uh, falsification of documentation, illegal importation via no, uh, neighboring countries are in is increasing as well. And then, of course, uh, the main challenges is the lack of knowledge with security guards, SAPs, and those people responsible for checking. Animal identification is also an issue for these guys. Average person is afraid of reptiles. Potential dangerous animals. Uh, suspicious behavior knowledge is not always there when checking the guys at the border post coming through. Lack of nationwide awareness. Lack of manpower. Site is forgery. Access to information. And then, of course, that's one of our main issues we have to address. The way forward is good. I'll quickly run through there, but it comes down that it's to better sharing of information between the provinces. We have to talk to, we have to start looking at some of these, as uh, Michelle said, about so-called parental uh, populations, which are actually wild-caught populations and not captive bred. And then, thank you, and there's my information. <laughs>